today. Today we have Zora here with us. Uh, she's a senior technical writer and the topic that we're covering is, will AI replace us? And Zora, if you can give a quick introduction to who you are and what you do, I will go from there. Yeah, thanks Josh um, for this opportunity again. I look forward to talking to you live for the first time. Uh, I'm Zora Mutabana. I work as a senior technical writer at Blackboard and I've been a technical writer for a long time, um, almost, almost coming up on two decades. So I've been doing this for a long time. I've worked in different um, industries, primarily in technology. And I am currently also working as a, I've sort of not also, but I've sort of transitioned into more of UX writing at Blackboard. And that's where I'm at. And um, I live in Dallas. So that's a little bit about me. I've been, I, I, I am the immediate past president of the local SDC chapter, the Lone Star, not Texas Lone Star chapter. So uh, that's about me in a nutshell. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, I know you have a podcast too, right? Yes. Uh, thanks for reminding about that. I always forget to mention. Yes, I do. I have a podcast. You can find uh, all the episodes on, uh, on, on your favorite app, or you can go to uh, insighttocom.show and you should be able to listen to it on on my website too but it is it is for a very niche audience and I'm right now on my season three I'm just wrapping it up and uh, working towards my next season I'm not sure what the topic will be uh, but stay tuned very cool um, so today is you know exciting topic and I think it's one of those topics that people who are looking for job security often worry about and people who want to transition to the role of technical writing, they're looking at AI replacing other writing jobs like copywriting, content writing, and maybe more content writing that's more blog post oriented, less technical per se, but they see it moving and they're like, is that going to affect my field? Now, what are some of the thoughts that come to you immediately when you hear of AI and technical writing? Um, I think it's, it's a concern for all of us no doubt. And um, I will say this. So I want to first, first of all, set off, uh, sort of set the expectations here on what, uh, where I am with AI. I haven't used AI in my field, in the field of technical communication, but we encounter it, right? It's all around us. Think about predictive text um, that is suggested when you're writing a Gmail or where, when you think about uh, organizing your photographs in Google Photos. I, I, I'm all about Google, so I'm going to allude to Google products more than anything else, but it's all around us. You think about translation, you think about handwriting recognition, you think about uh, social media monitoring. So AI is everywhere. So it is a valid question, will, it, will AI replace technical communication? Now, because I haven't used AI in my field personally, I know how it's being applied. So recently I was uh, attending the Convey UX 2022 conference online and there were a couple of sessions on AI and this was so timely. Uh, once we, after you had scheduled this, I obviously started digging into this topic and I'm like, I need to educate myself first before I can talk about it. So I've done a little bit of research on my end. So I'm gonna sort of share what I found and how I think we should apply AI to our field. Um, so, so let, let's tackle this question, you know, will AI replace technical communication? I believe no. I, 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 don't, I don't believe so. Will, I, will it entirely replace our profession? Not in the near term. I cannot speak for what will happen in the 10 years. But if you're talking about in the next five years, I don't think that's going to happen. But it is evolving quickly. And there are some areas of our field that have over the years uh, either completely disappeared or um, being taken over by the writers. For example, if you think about editing, when I started at uh, back in the day, I'm talking about 2005, uh, we had a full-time editor on staff and nothing would get published if there was no editor, if, if, it was, if the content was not reviewed by an editor. But since 2007, 2008, every company that I have worked at, we do not have a full-time editor on staff, on the team. Now, did AI replace them? No, I, I don't believe so because 
it was an emerging technology at the time. Uh, I, I don't think I was even aware about AI, um, but it, it's not that AI replaced them. It's just that the onus has fallen on us. But yes, um, you know, you can start doing grammar checks using Word, you can, you know, and the technology has moved to a point where today, uh, I think the, I, I hate to say that it, you know, it, we do what the editors did because they do a lot more than writers do. And probably that sort of explains why content may sometimes have, uh, uh, you know, it, it needs to be proofread. You know, if I'm creating content, it definitely needs to be proofread by somebody else. But editors are not available on staff today. And they have, it's just the evolution of how a profession is. So will AI replace me? Again, I don't think so. So setting that context here, I've not used AI, but AI is everywhere. Uh, and because I attended these two sessions, one of the sessions was by Lisa Young from Twitter, and they talk about how they are leveraging AI, and they call it content AI. And one of the cool things that they've done at Twitter is, uh, I'm not going to go into the details of what she talked about, but just uh, uh, w w what they've done to sort of leverage AI is they have defined how they're going to use AI in their context. How is the content team going to find AI? And she talks about uh, how they uh, use AI to, uh, th so this is what she says. I I'm quote unquote saying what Lisa shared. AI isn't a tool that does the writing for us. That is Twitter. It doesn't have research insights. Understand? It does not understand product strategy, business goals, or user needs. It is not aware of content formats or surfaces. So they have basically defined what AI is going to do and not going to do for them. So I think that is something that we as content creators have to start thinking about. Companies that are going to apply AI in their um, in, in their uh, to, to their writing, to their product uh, documentation, they need to decide, not just product documentation, any, any content creation, what is AI going to be? There has to be that definition and that scope of what AI is going to be. So then we are getting ahead of what AI will do for us, rather than saying, oh, AI is going to re replace us. Um, so that is, I think, very critical that we decide what AI is going to do for us rather than what, you know, uh, how, how AI just automatically replaces us. Uh, so I think that is a, def that is a, con uh, a definition con conversation that needs to be had. I think that makes a lot of sense. And, you know, let's say a particular outcome that we're looking for is, we need to flesh out a knowledge base for a software company. And maybe it's part of a knowledge base. You know, there's a lot that can go into a knowledge base, but maybe this part has to do with the editor, right? That the software company has. And let's say those articles that need to be written are drawn from product insights and data and all of that. And is the AI then uh, taking all that data and saying, hey, this is the article that needs to get written based on usage of the product and then yes. writes the article. Yes. Um, so that's something that I can see. I don't know if that's even called AI or just like lots of automation there. Um, but I've also seen uh, tools come out recently, one called Tango. And what it does, it enables you to basically create a very quick tutorial just by clicking on a product. And it'll just write it out for you with uh, images and, and GIFs. And when I saw that, I said, hey, well, you know, you combine that with product insights and, and maybe you can have uh, fill out a lot of topics that need to get covered. Now, it may not be perfect, but it could cover some basis. Um, so tell me a little more about this tool. Is the content being written on the fly? Is, I haven't used it, so I'm, I'm curious. It's being written based on like where you click. So if you click on like... Uh, an icon, it will say, click on the icon and top left toolbar, right? And then you click on something else and it may not be perfect, um, right. but it gives you a starting point. And when I saw that, I was like, oh, this is really interesting um, because uh, you could just sort of combine it with maybe another tool or um, just to help speed up your flow of creating documentation, especially doing things like screen grabs and creating GIFs can sometimes be a little bit uh, time consuming. You're like, I right. just want this to, you know, to be done for me. Um, 
and they enable that? Uh, that's cool. So I'm thinking, uh, you know, in my, if, if I were to use that technology, uh, I'm still involved in the process, right? I'm mm -hmm. not giving full control to the AI because AI is culture agnostic. It's not culture aware. It's not uh, user aware. Um, uh, and, and it is not ethics aware. So you need to bring, and, and only a human can bring that into that whole user experience. So the content may be created on the fly, but it has to still be uh, uh, to sort of proofread and, uh, and and um, and you know f uh, and fixed before somebody can consume it. So AI may be doing the content creation, but there has to be an oversight by a writer in the back. It has to be curated by us. Um, so I'm I'm sort of flipping the argument here. Uh, we look at uh, as as a writer, we've talked about in the past. We've talked. I've talked about how do I like you know. Um, improve or enhance user experience. So let's talk about robot chats. And this is this is my limited experience with AI. This is that is as far as I have researched it. And I've thought about, okay, if I want to improve my user experience, we need to bring AI into our our user experience of the UI of the user interface. And what do I need to do? So I need to build content. Now AI might suggest, okay, look at let's say a user searches for something in a robot chat and the robot chat presents a few articles, okay, based on the user query. That content is being written by writers. That content is very culture aware. It is written empathetically. It is written with a persona in mind. So that content creation itself is not coming, it's not built by AI, but AI is presenting that based on the user query. Uh, so we are, we are creating that content, we are curating it and we are letting AI build that um, to respond to that output, that outcome based on the user query. Does that make sense? That makes a lot of sense. And I think um, having a gear toward a specific audience persona is probably one of the hardest things. And I just also want to take into consideration some of the comments that people have been posting. Um, just so uh, we have one from JMG, which is uh, they say that they've done a variety of technical writing, but they can't see AI replacing a technical writer in several areas, such as creating SOPs and other SYA documentation. Um, and I think this goes to your point that this may be because of, you know, your persona and personas are sometimes flexible, right? It's like yes. persona can change over years and sometimes even quicker than that. And you have to adjust to their new language. Um, the job of a technical writer today looks different than a job of a technical writer like five years ago for most industries. Same for like a product manager. So how does AI able to take in that data to change the language accordingly? Um, so just like you're saying, I think it'd be very difficult. And then we have another comment here that says, uh, while there's always going to be a human element, I think the 2030 report on how millions of jobs be automated has some definite truth to it. <laughs> so... I do believe that um, it's just uh, just knowing where, right? Yes, um, I, I think we cannot speak what technology where we are going to be in ten years' time. We are we are constantly mm -hmm. evolving, and I think the it, it really is up to us writers on how we evolve. Uh, if we are looking at traditional print documentation, uh, uh, you know, long form writing that is not culture aware or uh, user aware or persona aware, then yes, probably AI can do that for us. So it really dis it, it's up to an organization to decide how are we going to leverage AI for a good uh, user experience. So it's th 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 that, that conversation needs to happen and that convers conversation needs to happen right now uh, before we can say, oh, AI is going to completely replace us. Uh, I, I've heard this mm -hmm. argument 20 years ago when I started, you know, technical writers are going to go away. Something is going to replace us. And I'm here 20 years later. Not to say that I will not be there 20 years later because technology is evolving and our roles might evolve. So the more technically aware that you are, then you can stay ahead of the game and in front of that AI technology that is evolving so fast. So one of the things that I would advocate for is the new entrance is to be as techn technically aware as you can. I'm not saying you have to go code or know how to script, but staying informed um, and, and just uh, to, trying to be proactive about 
this conversation is hard, but we need to have this conversation and how are we going to evolve with the evolving technology? So yeah. that's my take on it. I also think that, you know, just the idea of communication is, is sometimes very intangible to improve upon and is one of the hardest things to improve. Uh, just simple, uh, like different phrases that you use just to communicate with SMEs. Like how is AI going to fill that gap, right? Communicating with an SME for you and, and trying to get them to give you the, the right information that you need, I think could be very, very difficult to say the least. Like is an SME more likely to respond to a computer asking for information or a person who has developed a strong relationship with them? Um, right. And, and, and it's called artificial intelligence. So there is some sort of intelligence that is inbuilt into that technology. Uh, but it is, does it have emotions? No. Uh, does it have empathy? No. Uh, will it get to that point? I don't know. But to your point, when I'm writing uh, UI text, user, uh, you know, and there is so many, there was, there's so much conversation that's happening behind the scenes before we write that one label or that one text. So if you're just trying to create passive text, move this here or click this icon, I think to that extent, it's fine. But then as you start getting into the nitty gritties of what are you, what are you trying to communicate, that requires conversation at a human level. And there is that uh, human effort, which cannot be ignored. So Again, I think we need to get, we have to have that hard conversation. How are we going to use this technology at my organization? Uh, and at Twitter, they have an oversight uh, committee. Uh, I don't know if they call it that, but they have defined what the scope of AI is going to be. How are, how are they going to use AI? And it's not going to be replacing the writers. Uh, but they want to create content at scale. So how is that going to happen? How is it going to inform? Uh, it's use, they're using it for content governance more than for content creation. And I think that's an interesting, interesting direction where uh, companies are taking it to. So I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm very excited. Uh, and to some extent, I am a little fearful, but I, I'm excited. I'm excited to see where this goes. And, you know, when I was interviewing for Blackboard, for example, they did not see whether I could write or not, but they wanted to see how, how can I have these hard conversations to find answers. And if writers are willing to do that, um, and I think we are all capable of doing that, but proactively questioning and trying to find answers is what is going to secure our, our, our future, our profession uh, in, in a different way, but we will, I, I don't think we are going to go away in the near term. I'm, I, um, <laughs> yeah, I'm talking in the next five years. I cannot speak for the next 10 years. Yeah, it's like you always want to speak for like, further out, but then you realize just if you look back at the last five years, you go, wow, like how much did we, did we not know? Right. Right. Um, yeah. So yeah. we have a couple of comments that came in. Um, so one from David Darner who said until more writers understand how to write an unstructured text, we'll continue to use online authoring tools for most documents. Even if we all learn how to write docs as code, we'll still write. Um, which, you know, we're far from writers understanding how to write unstructured text. I feel like we're pretty far from that. Um, so that would mean we still have a long ways to go. Um, I do think that there are a lot of technical writers that do need to improve their skill set moving forward um, and that there is this, this gap that needs to get filled. But there's, but I think they're understanding that. From everybody that I've talked to, it seems like they're, they're cluing in that they need to pick up their skill set. Yeah, and another area is, I think, translation, uh, where uh, there, there has been some use of, um, I, I work with, uh, I know, I know, I have colleagues who are into translation, and I've asked them, has AI, is AI going to completely take over? And they're like, absolutely not. Again, it's because when you're writing text in English, and that content has been converted to other languages, unless AI becomes culture aware, you definitely need to, for somebody to proofread that content. So there are actually editors who are coming back. They may not be creating that content, but they have to go, you know, review that content mm -hmm. and make sure that it is, uh, it is localized and translated to the, to the region it is written for. Um, so there is in fact more involvement of humans there at that point. Uh, so AI has not been able to uh, replace translation because I think that was one of the fields where there was a lot of focus about translation. 
Yeah, it's so funny. I've, I've seen people who have tried to translate their websites or, or products and should do it automatically. And I'm going like, oh, gosh, this is going to be a complete disaster. <laughs> um, right. I've never seen it work out well. If I can find, if someone can show me one case study where it's worked out well, you know, I'd I'd be happy to take a look at it, but I just have not seen it yet. Yeah. I, I, you know, I'm looking at all these uh, comments from uh, our listeners, and I'm so excited because uh, JMG, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, uh, says, yes, translation does not equal to interpretation. And I have something interesting to share. Just last week, uh, my 16-year-old is trying to learn. I speak uh, five languages um, because I'm from India, and it's very common for, for Indians to speak uh, more than one language. Now, she wants to learn Hindi which is commonly spoken. And there was one, she was listening to a Hindi song and uh, it had a lot of words that even I didn't know. So I thought, let's go ask Google, Google Translate. And I put in the word and it translates it into something absolutely random. And this is, this is literal translation and Google Translate failed. <laughs> And I was, I was very disappointed because I was hoping to learn something. And, and I, so, yes, translation is not equal to interpretation because there is a context. So that same word could be used in so many different ways. So then I thought, okay, let me put this whole sentence in there. Uh, so I put that whole sentence in there and yet it could not interpret for me. It, 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 I was trying to give it context and it could still not process it for me. So we are definitely not at that point where writers can be replaced. That's my take. Yeah, and that context is continuing to change all the time, too, on what words mean, which often frustrates lots of people, to say the least, and, and gets into uh, arguments of definitions where those arguments often just go nowhere. <laughs> and, Absolutely. And okay. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and again, I'm thinking back on my experience. Um, I recently went to India uh, for the summer uh, to meet my family, and English has evolved to become Hinglish. H-I-N-G-L-I-S-H. Now, the same language has a very different um, context there. There are some phrases that are not used commonly in Amer American or British English. Uh, so I have to be culture aware to, to, to interpret what is being told to me, to process that. Will AI be able to do that? That requires a lot of work for, you know, you really have to feed all the context, all the culture into that intelligence for it to 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 process what you're saying. Uh, so there is definitely that human element is not lost again. So uh, I think I, I think we are not there yet where it can completely replace us. Yeah, I do think for certain writing industries, similar to like copywriting and uh, like blog article writing that we've seen where people just produce like uh, I don't want to say lower level quality blog articles, but around there, there's definitely going to be a lot of replacement and also um, around fiction writing. I think a lot of fiction writing can be written by AI because it doesn't require a lot of communication with SMEs. Um, there's a lot of signs to uh, behind it, such as like, here is a story arc. Uh, we need to hit these points. Um, and then also data behind how much a character gets uses, used or a setting gets used. Those type of things, I think, um, can make fiction writing a more database per se. So you can go ahead and take all that data and analyze it and write stories out of that. But, you know, the missing part between that and the bridge of technical writing, I feel like, again, is that knowledge that you have to get from other people um, in order to put it together. Um, and also the context of words that change so much in technical writing compared to fiction writing. Um, but, you know, we'll see. I think, uh, again, it's from what we've seen so far, nothing's been perfect. Even like writing a blog article, people still need to review it. Even copywriting, people still need to review it. Uh, and it's like what data is really needed to, to, to move the AI forward? And I think that's maybe what we're getting at is, is that those type of questions. Uh, yeah, you you brought up some interesting uh, uh, things to surface here. One is, uh, I mean, I have not done fictional uh, writing. I haven't done blog writing. I've been, um, so I, I haven't done creative writing. Uh, but I see, you know, that yes, AI could probably do it. But I think if I were to extend that, uh, fiction also has a lot of culture to it. Um, 
right? There is a lot of, the, when, when as an author, when I'm doing, uh, when I'm writing something, I'm, I'm bringing my experience, my past into my fiction. So I, I have to sort of transport myself into the author's world if I want to really enjoy that fiction, that piece of fiction. Uh, but if AI can, can AI, will AI allow me to transcend those boundaries from my my reality into the author's world? I don't know. So I, I kind of question that again, uh, that AI, uh, it, it, it still would probably need to be reviewed by another writer, by a human being, uh, even that fiction, that fictional piece that is being written. I can't speak to copywriting and blogs. I, I haven't done that. And I think somebody who is doing that and has leveraged AI should speak to that. Um, but fiction, I'm kind of on the fence. I think a, a human element is still required there. Um, yeah, I do think for some pieces, you know, human element is definitely needed more. One of the things that I noticed, which sort of geared me in this direction of um, the authors today, I believe, have a lot less originality in their writing than they did previously. And I noticed when I was going through um, some of the Harry Potter series, and I realized how many of the phrases were taken from Tolkien's books, from Lord of the Rings, right? It was literally word for word and a lot of memorable phrases. And I started looking at that and I did some research on Google and it's a very common author practice to go ahead and just find phrases that you really like from other books and just reuse them in your books. And Isn't that plagiarism? If, if it's like a short phrase, I guess, I guess it's not really considered plagiarism, but like it hurt my heart when I was like, I was like, wow. It's like, <laughs> um, yeah, I'm, I'm disappointed to hear that because I mean, I've read, I've read uh, Harry Potter, but I haven't uh, read the J.R. Tolkien books. So it's something now I'll be going and looking at. Um, but then you also talked about data and knowledge, right? AI intelligence has data, right? It's just knowledge is something when you add uh, culture and context and user awareness to it. Uh, so I, do, I, I believe what AI is looking at is pure data. It is very objective. Uh, it's very dehumanized. Uh, and uh, if we are to look at mm -hmm. writing content for real users, then you need real humans writing for them. Josh, I think I may have lost you. Hey, Josh, can you hear me? Okay, but am I back? Yes, you are back, uh, but you're still frozen. <laughs> we need better AI without me being here. <laughs> <laughs> this is where AI could possibly help us. Yeah, it's like, what would Josh say? To predict when yeah, we're going to have some we have downtime and then adjust to that. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, yeah, it, it's wild. I feel like, like we're, you know, we don't really know where what we're going to see over the next like five to 10 years. And um, things are just moving a lot faster. Everything is compounding, right? And uh, it seems like companies just like pop up up out of nowhere and you're like oh you now do all this for me and i think that's a lot of that we'll see for technical writers at least something you mentioned before is making our jobs easier right we're going to become more efficient yes. at what we do and um which is great i think the one part that's there's going to be more emphasis on than ever because of that is sort of the part that ai is able to replace is communication there's gonna be so much more effort focused on yeah. okay now that we have the technical writer job really sorted out in terms of um, this writing and what to write, pulling data insights from products. Well, we need someone who's a great communicator, you know, that can really communicate with team members and SMEs. And that will be maybe the quality that gets highlighted moving forward. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, with my podcast, I also uh, transcribe my podcast. So I use Otter. And Otter does a fantastic job of taking my audio and creating the transcript, but and and it also has voice recognition, uh, but it mm -hmm. does not get my pronunciation right. 
it's always off and if you were to read the original transcript <laughs> it's 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 hilarious so i have to go and fix that and i spent a good half an hour fixing my transcript uh i would probably spend more times x uh to get that a uh, time six maybe to get that right uh, to just create the original transcript but i'm still putting in 30 minutes of my time fixing it now that is ai but uh, it, it so it doesn't get the accent right and it, we've been working on that technology for a while and we still haven't got that right so uh, if ai needs to really get smart it better catch up with the different accents that are there around this world, right? And the way the language is evolving, will AI be able to keep up with it? Uh, there, there are a lot of questions here, really, more than answers. So we need to question and we need to uh, really kind of take charge. You know, I think we shouldn't let technology take charge of us, um, but we need to sort of decide and, and steer where we want this technology to go for us. So that is why staying ahead of that technology is more important than ever for me. Um, Josh, I think I lost you again. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Hopefully I'm back. Um, yes, you're back. Yeah. It, it is the way of the world with, with Wi-Fi connection. Um, I know we covered a lot here today. Um, is there anything else that you feel like we need to touch upon uh, before we go? And I just want to thank everybody for, for being with here and commenting so far and participating. Yeah, I really appreciate the participation. No, I don't think I have anything to add. I think we've covered pretty much uh, everything that I wanted to say. I have uh, on my window, I have uh, uh, some notes here that I wanted to share. And... Um, and I think we've covered everything. Thanks for the opportunity. And for those watching, if you haven't yet, make sure to go ahead and connect with Zora. Uh, she's an awesome individual. Uh, you can find her on LinkedIn. Uh, her podcast will be in the description below. It's already in the description below on the LinkedIn event. Uh, but if you're coming from YouTube, um, I'll go ahead and put it there too. And we'll go ahead and see you in some of our future videos. And again, thank you for being here and we'll rock and roll. Thank you.